Well, now we get to find out what is happening in the world of poetry, something we can all use more of. Um, you know, all of us, you know, spending more time at home during the pandemic, reading books, reading poetry. I hope you've had a chance because there's some wonderful poets right across the country and right here in Ottawa. And I'm joined by the managing editor of ARC Poetry Magazine, Chris Johnson. Chris, welcome to the show. Great to have you here. And um, Chris, for those that aren't familiar with, with ARC Poetry Magazine, uh, give them a, a little bit of a, a background on ARC. Sure thing. Uh, it's been a, the magazine was established like in 1978. So it's been around for a while before my time for sure. And we've been in continuous publication for what, what is that 43 years now? Mm -hmm. uh, and it's a great poetry magazine. We put out three issues a year. Uh, we're distributed to subscribers all across Canada, po always publishing new poetry by great Canadian poets and international poets reviews on uh, new poetry books and essays, conversations with poets and writers. Uh, so if that's kind of your cup of tea, it's a great place to figure out what's going on in the literary world. And you've got a great event that's happening tonight, Chris. Let's talk about that event, and in particular, uh, Diana Brebner, who, you know, you're handing out a prize with her name uh, and, you know, honoring her great work. Uh, for those that aren't familiar with Diana, tell us a little bit about Diana Brebner. For sure. Diana is, uh, was and is an exceptional poet. Um, she passed away in 2001 uh, from breast cancer. But before she sadly left the world too early, she was a huge proponent uh, for poets in Ottawa. Uh, she did a lot of mentorship and teaching classes at local bookshops. Uh, and after, she, after her passing, uh, John Barton, who was the editor of Arc Poetry Magazine at the time, he decided that it was important for us to remember her legacy and uh, honor her work by establishing this award, the Diana Brebner Prize, that we give out to a poet in Ottawa who has not yet been published in book form. Uh, so poets are encouraged to submit their work uh, each year uh, in September is our deadline most of the most of the time or most years. Okay. Uh, and uh, we have a guest judge, a new guest judge every year who will select the best poem out of those submissions that we receive. And we award that uh, in our spring issue, which we're going to be launching tonight. Yeah. So uh, tell us what, what, what does that what does the event look like? What does the what, what have you had planned for the event? I'm super excited for this event. Uh, I'm lucky to be uh, working with the Ottawa International Writers Festival and QUART, a queer arts collective in Ottawa, uh, to put together this event. So we have four readers. Uh, as I mentioned before, John Barton is going to be uh, one of the readers at the event, as well as Anita Leahy, who also was working with the Arc Poetry magazine a few years back when the award was first established. And then we'll also hear from Sneha Madhavan Rees, and Dessa Bayrock, uh, both of whom won the Diana Brebner Prize themselves. Uh, so it's going to be really wonderful to hear those poets talking uh, about their experience, both winning the prize and uh, from John and Anita, their experience actually knowing Diana Brebner. Um, and John will be performing uh, with a musical ensemble, Ensemble Allure, uh, who will be playing some music set to his poems. Uh, this was part of a larger project that we're excited to be kind of teasing out tonight that uh, Quart has been working on. Um, you know, we've talked to a lot of artists on this show, Chris, uh, over the past you know couple of years, and you know obviously many challenges and, and obstacles uh, when it comes to to the pandemic for artists across the board. What about literary artists? What what sort of challenges, if if there were any, for for literary artists uh, over the over the last couple of years during the pandemic? Yeah, it's been difficult because in a lot of ways, literary artists are kind of lucky that uh, we can continue our, practicing our art at home uh, or wherever we can do some writing, but we still miss out on the excitement and the energy from live, in-person poetry readings and book readings or signings and events like that, um, just like all the other dancers and musicians yeah. and uh, and actors who've lost the opportunity to like perform in front of an audience. Uh, us poets are very much the same. 
I so, can imagine, yeah. Yeah, it, it, I definitely know there's been so many people who have released books over the pandemic that haven't been able to have an in-person launch. They'll just be reading to their computer. And uh, even though they still get their books published and out into the hands of readers, they really miss that opportunity to meet people face to face and get that immediate feedback of hearing people respond directly to your reading of your poetry. Yeah, and it's very different, uh, you know, doing it personally in person than it is doing virtually. I'm sure many have done, you know, sort of a book launch virtually, but it, it it's not the same thing as you've described. Uh, Chris, really appreciate you joining us today. Thanks very much for your time. And speaking of the literary arts, we're going to be catching up with the Ottawa Public Library right after this.